welcome to Bourbon and Bullets. I um, This is a re-upload of the original video, Trudeau's Lies Exposed. I've re-uploaded, as, as you may have noticed, as Trudeau Exposed. The reason for that is it was taken down by YouTube for my first copyright strike. Now, my old channel, which was hacked by Glacier Media, um, that I didn't have any copyright strikes or any community guideline strikes and I didn't have on my new channel up until now is my first copyright strike and the reason was was I played a 15 second clip from the Canadian press um, now which was hardly a controversy. I mean, it, this is the first time anyone in you know, the Canadian press has ever made anything about it and the reason is obvious I in the preamble to my previous video I was talking about Glacier Media and the criminal organization that's Glacier Media they have ties to overseas hackers, ties to the Communist Party of China. Um, they're just, you know, I mean, they're criminals. Um, they're, you know, computer piracy. Uh, they illegally sell Adobe product, Adobe software products, um, which, I mean, eventually they're going to get caught and they're going to be, they, they take that very, very seriously in the U.S., especially in California, and they will eventually get caught for it, and th they'll seek extradition for uh, Glacier Media executives because they they really go after that hard. Um, but anyways, because I went after them so hard, they of course, because you know, the Canadian media is very, very tight and I'm sure that, because uh, they monitor, and they monitor my channels, they, as I said, they hacked my previous YouTube channel. So they uh, were looking for a reason to get it taken down and they, they go to Canadian press, hey, you know, this guy's using, you know, some of your material, um, you know, 15 seconds of whatever. Um, you know, it should be under it should be allowed under fair use guidelines, anyways. But if you challenge it, um, and you know you're up, you're going to be up against YouTube's legal team, and they'll find a loophole somewhere, and then they can they, just, they can just take your whole channel down. So th that's exactly what they want you to do is to challenge, you know, to to give you a copyright strike for nothing, have you challenge it, and then use that to take down your whole channel. So there's no there's no sense in challenging it. Uh, I, I guess I got to be a little bit more careful, but uh, obviously, as you can hear, I'm not going to back down from from denouncing the criminal organization that is Glacier Media. I mean, the rest of Canadian media is pretty corrupt, but I just you know I happen to have firsthand experience with Glacier Media. Um, I mean, I saw they recently sold off Fund Data, which uh, you know was trading uh, information that was based in the U.S. and I'm sure that. You know, a big part of that was they need to get away with it, considering their their uh, connection to overseas hackers. You know, the last thing they want to do is get uh, investigated by uh, you know uh, U.S. federal uh, trade authorities. So they sold that off, but you know they're far from clean. So eventually they will get caught. In the meantime, um, I'm going to keep fighting them, and they're going to keep trying to hack my so. Well, they do hack my social media and hack my try to hack my YouTube channel. Um, but as I say, I'm going to keep going. So, uh, sorry for the long preamble. Um, I just wanted to clear up why that was taken down. I, it kind of threw a wrench. I was working on a couple other things and then, you know, I kind of debated whether I should re-upload this, but, uh, obviously I have. Okay. So that said on, uh, on with the regular, regularly scheduled video. Some of you may have seen this already. Because uh, it's just a, a re-edit. It's probably going to be a little bit out of whack in places because I had to take a few things down. But uh, ho hopefully the pertinent information is still there. Okay, so um, with that said, uh, here we go. Hello and welcome to Bourbon and Bullets. Well, folks, no sooner do I put up a video on the Mark Norman case, one that I delayed putting up to, to gather information, than... Uh, the uh, government throws a wrench into the whole monkey work. So what happened was that uh, the charges have been dropped. Now, we can speculate why that may have happened, but first, why don't we, why don't we listen to the, the Crown Prosecutor, the Director of Public Prosecutions. Now, remember, this was the person that the Trudeau government, the Trudeau Liberals, directed to drop the case Against or, or to give, uh, I forget what the uh, special dispensation was to SNC Lavalin because you know they're they're a multi-billion dollar corporation. This investigation has been going on for two years now. They fired Mark Norm. They removed they removed him from his position at uh, the Defense Department three months before they laid a charge, 
And before any charge was laid, Trudeau predicted, that great legal mind, Justin Trudeau, predicted that it would end up in the courts. And now all of a sudden, all charges have been dropped. Yeah, well, you know, forgive me if we don't take that with a grain of salt. Obviously, you know, Trudeau's looking at the, the optics of it, and even, even it's getting through to his dense head that uh, it's not going to bode well for him. But I am glad to see uh, Vice Admiral Mark Norman um, exonerated. Now, um, at his um, press conference this morning, he made some very cryptic remarks. So let's have a listen. I'm obviously pleased with the Crown's decision to stay the charges against me. While I'm relieved to be exonerated of any wrongdoing, I am disappointed it has taken this long. The alarming and protracted bias of perceived guilt across the senior levels of government has been quite damaging. And the emotional and financial impacts of this entire ordeal have taken their toll. I have an important story to tell that Canadians will want and need to hear. It is my intention in the coming days to tell that story, not to lay blame, but to ensure that we all learn from this experience. Well, I don't doubt that uh, he does have a very interesting story to tell, just like uh, Judy Wilson-Raybould had a very interesting story to tell, but she was barred from telling it. He is under no such restrictions, this still being a free country. So we await with bated breath what the good Admiral has to tell us about the comings and goings of the Trudeau cabinet. But hazard a guess that Andrew Leslie saying that he wasn't going to run in October and that he was going to be testifying in Vice Admiral Mark Norman's favor at the upcoming trial certainly played a factor in the government telling the prosecutors that, uh-oh, <laughs> this is not going the way we, we, we expect it to go, so let's just uh, maybe find a different way around this. Uh, that, uh, again, you know, Andrew... Andrew Leslie, you know, a lieutenant general who was expected to be uh, made uh, minister of defense, never made it past the back benches. He was recruited as a so-called star candidate, but uh, Trudeau, of course, went with Sajin because, you know, he's Sikh and diversity is our strength. Sajin, of course, famously got up in front of a, a group of people and took credit for uh, basically winning the war in Afghanistan. Uh, so, yeah, he was a great recruit. Instead, we could have had, you know, somebody with... with actual high-level defense experience like Andrew Leslie, but no, he languished on the back benches, and uh, he's probably seen enough corruption and bureaucratic wrangling and outright incompetency and stupidity stupidity to last him a lifetime, and he's, uh, I guess he's probably had enough, but we won't get to hear what he had to say, so that's unfortunate. Now, um, so the Trudeau, the Trudeau liberals, they are unraveling day by day. They were, un they were unraveling faster than the, than the court case against, the, the prosecutor's case against Mark Norman has unraveled. So you put this on top of SNC-Lavalin, you put this on top of giving $12 million to the Weston family slash Loblaws uh, after, for you know, environmentally friendly refrigerators after they've been you know, uh, accused of price fixing bread for 15 years. And then you put it on top, uh, and then, of course, this, which is basically came as a result of, you know, trying to do a favor to the multi-billionaire Irving brothers. And, you know, here's Trudeau, the man who said, oh, that he was in favor of helping the middle class. All he's done is, is put tax after tax after tax on top of the middle class and give break after break after break to the billionaires and millionaires, mainly, mostly billionaires. He really loves his billionaires. Um, he can't get enough of them flying to private islands, um, giving them you know, $12 million uh, subsidies, uh, giving the media $600 million, although it looks like that hasn't paid off too well, uh, handing the Irvings $3 billion, uh, you know, you know, and that's probably another factor that played into this, that the, the, the sleazy Irving brothers who can't stand the media scrutiny, they probably decided, well, you know, you better make this go away because uh, we might find ourselves in court and that's the last place we want to be. So, yeah, as it's coming to, as people are coming to realize, even, even some of his most fervent fans, 
you know, the, the, the Trudeau mania got, you know, believe me, I, I was not uh, indulging in that. But for all the idiots that, that got caught up in Trudeau mania, they found out that, uh, you know, fancy socks and a hairdo does not a government make. And he has done nothing except pile up scandal after scandal in, for the last four years. So what's his strategy going into the fall election now uh, five months away? Why it's to combat uh, cyber threats to our democracy because, yeah, because Russia is so concerned about, about Canada, uh, Canada's life. I mean, really, they, if, if Russia's going to meddle with the, with the election, they want to keep him in charge because they want to watch him, you know, basically destroy Canada's economy, destroy the, Canada's military. They'd be happy to keep Trudeau in power. But no, they're, they're going to make sure that, uh, you know, the cyber threats. By the way, you know, liberals, you know, the Trudeau liberals, I mean, you know, they're so incompetent. They haven't seen that that whole thing failed spectacularly against Donald Trump. That amounted to nothing. It's completely backfired, but that's what they're going with. They're going to protect us from uh, the cyber threats. And hey, lo and behold, of course, he has no trouble talking to billionaires and uh, the wealthy elites in Silicon Valley. So, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure, we'll talk to Google and we'll make sure we'll have an entire uh, committee making sure that the Canadians do not have access to foreign news because, uh, you know, uh, you know, bless our little hearts, we might get confused. We may not be able to make our minds up. We need to only get the official, air quotes, news sources from the uh, Trudeau liberals. Meanwhile, some of those uh, disgraced companies that uh, are getting dragged through the mud justifiably for their wrongdoings and corruption, well, the people that work there, just like I said, big business and big government, they work hand in hand. So what happens when things go bad over these big corporations? Why? They, they jump into government. They jump into uh, the bureaucracy because that's, that's where they're ha I mean, it's, it's pretty much the same job. It's just two sides of the same coin, so it's it's not like there's much of an adjustment for them. So of course, you know, once these guys uh, are uh, disgraced over in the private sector, the, which is really not much of a private sector, they just jump on over to uh, big government. In the meantime, uh, or meanwhile, this is aside from that, I should say, uh, Trudeau is doing a good job of alienating all of our allies. He, of course, continues to flirt with terrorists and, uh, you know, if dancing in a sari in India wasn't enough while, while having dinner with, with ter convicted terrorists. Um, again, he's, he's over here in Canada talking to former, or not former, Sikh people that are associated with, with uh, Sikh terrorism. Um, the guy, I, I, is he just that stupid? I guess the answer is, yeah, he is that stupid. You'd think that maybe someone in his inner circle might be saying, you know, maybe this isn't such a good idea. So he's given ten and a half million dollars to a convicted killer uh, terrorist, Omar Khadr. He's pissed off the U.S. He's in a trade war with China, the country that you know whose dictatorship he 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 admired so much. Um, he's uh, entered into a security agreement with uh, France. You know, with Macron, who's who's his country's uh, imploding, and Merkel in Germany, and she's already announced that she's out. So he, he enter, entered in a security agreement with them that excluded the U.S. And now he goes to the U.S. for help with the China trade war, and pouts that uh, big mean Donald Trump won't help him with it after you know the guy's just been insulting them and trying to exclude the U.S. So, of course, now they're going to fall back on what uh, all the social justice warriors and the leftists fall back on when they're up, when they really, you know, when they have no argument, when, you know, all of their, their, their failed ideology fails. Racism. Of course, it's all just racism. We've got we to gotta fight that horrible white nationalism that, that is going to destroy Canada. And by white nationalism, they mean the yellow vest protest that rolled into Ottawa, who, of course, the media and Trudeau liberals, they all smeared as a bunch of Nazis, even though there was people of all different races, creeds, and colors that were there that were just upset with the fact that the economy has moved into recession. And, and that's another thing that's not widely reported. You know, while, while the U.S., normally Canada's 
economy moves in pretty much in lockstep with the U.S. Now, while the U.S. is experiencing um, levels of growth not seen really since about the well since the '90s, um, when they had three to four percent uh, growth, and you know, of course, Obama said, "Well, we're never going to have that again." Well, Trump selected, and there you go, you're seeing it again. Um, Canada's actually moved into zero growth. We get a couple of more quarters, we'll officially be in a recession. So how about that? Uh, but let's not talk about that. Let's talk about white supremacy. That's, that's the real thing that's, that's critical to Canada. That's what we really want to talk about in the upcoming election, is all that horrible white nationalism. And of course, his uh, in, entire cabinet, they all, they all took to Twitter and, and lined up and said, oh yeah, oh my God, just a uh, white supremacy, white nationalism. That's, Oh, it's a huge problem. We got to fight that. Uh, let us not forget, however, that when the hijab girl, the fake, the 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 hoax, uh, proved to be a hoax, he got up in no time flat. Or I mean, before it's proved to be a hoax, he was already he was up in comments, tearfully, tearfully apologizing for the horrible Islamophobia that is rampant in Canada. Meanwhile, or latterly. One of his Syrian refugees who had been in the country for all of three months, one of these great refugees that he rushed to bring in, he had raped and murdered uh, Melissa Shen in New Westminster, or not New Westminster, in Burnaby. But it's not the refugees who are the threat, it's, it's that horrible white nationalism taking over the country. Um, his incompetence it just continues to grow and to multiply into... All facets, all facets of government. It's it's just everywhere. It's the economy, foreign affairs, domestic affairs, the legal system. It, we're becoming a banana republic. Uh, of course, recently he famous or infamously twice mistake, uh, mistook uh, Prime Minister uh, Abe of Japan for the Prime Minister of China. If the guy. You know, he, he's the one who called China, you know, his admiration for their dictatorship. So they don't have a prime minister. They have a dictator, a dictator for life. So even when he's trying to, you know, redirect people away from his horrible record on domestic affairs and tries to uh, get back into the eye of the public media, which the international media, which just, you know, we're, we're just lavishing adoration on him for for first couple of years. Uh, you know, that's not where, that's failing spectacularly. Of course, this, this comes on the heels, if you remember a few months ago, that John McCallum uh, was fired as ambassador to China because he was basically working on the side of the Chinese. We have, what more evidence do we have to know that how much the Trudeau liberals admire the Chinese basic dictatorship is that when it push came to shove, they took Chinese interests over uh, Canadian interests. This was on the uh, Meng Wanzhou uh, on the Huawei uh, controversy, when McCain was saying, "Oh yeah, it, it'll come to nothing. We'll we'll get her out. Don't worry about it." Uh, and then, as I said in my previous video, the whole Aga Khan controversy has not died. The RCMP is still looking into it, and the RCMP, probably feeling that the Trudeau Liberals are on the way out, have decided that uh, they're no longer going to act as his personal Stasi, which unfortunately they have been for the last few years. They're switching sides and realizing that uh, we better make good. We better go back to enforcing the, the rule of law in this country because it looks like uh, Idiot Boy is not going to be around much longer and may even end up behind bars. That, of course, will never happen. We, we, we know that the, there's, a, there's a legal system for the high and mighty and there's a legal system for the rest of us. Even if Trudeau is out of power, that sadly is not going to change. But uh, anyways, the good news is that even the usual zombified uh, electorate is waking up to the absolute incompetency of the Trudeau liberals, and we may see uh, a positive change come the fall. There, there's still a few things that uh, uh, there's, there's still a few uh, wrinkles tiring out there, mainly the problem of Andy Pandy, Andrew Shearer and then the Conservative Party and the direction they're headed in. But that's a video for another day. So thanks, as always, for watching and listening. And remember, it's you, the listener, that helps keep me going. So if you want to drop a dollar or two in the virtual tip jar, at least I can go buy myself a beer and drown my sorrows. 
uh, link to PayPal and Patreon in the description. Until next time, this has been Bourbon and Bullets. Mm -hmm.